Hey, there Kurt. he is. What's up, Travis? How are I'm, you? I'm good. I'm good. How's it going? Going well. Well, you, you move so fast these days. Are you in Miami? You in New York? You elsewhere? I'm in New York now. Yeah? Nice. How's everything going? It's good. It's good. It's yeah. good. Hi, how you doing? Loving the, loving the conference so far. Oh, yeah. This has been fantastic. We absolutely are having a great time. Um, let's just jump into the conversation. Um, since this is the, the Diversity Summit, I'd like to start talking about your most recent venture, Group Black. Travis, tell us about Group Black, namely why you started it and what it will mean for Black-owned businesses. Yeah, so, um, no, it's interesting. So, you know, when I, when I started Group Black, I didn't wake up one day and I was like, you know what, you know, I'm going to start a <laughs> company for sure. Um, but, you know, it was really uh, based on, you know, after seeing what happened during, like with the murder of George Floyd, the BLM movement, I think what we saw was the, that our collective consciousness has been raised across many different industries, right? Media being one of those industries, right? Mm -hmm. And one of the outcomes of that raise in collective consciousness is the fact that 0.5% of media dollars were being invested in, in Black-owned media companies. Now, you know, what, what I was really relieved and energized by the fact that many of many brands and agencies have stood up to make pledges and commitments to diversify their spends in black owned media companies. Mm -hmm. um, but what I was most concerned about was that those commitments wouldn't convert into action, right? And the reality is, is that the, the black owned media industry has been underfunded and is nation and needs a lot of investment and accelerated acceleration to catalyze the growth. Mm -hmm. um, and so with that, we started Group Black. And what Group Black is, is the home for black owned media, really designed for, to do uh, four things. One, help build the next generation of innovative media brands that are black owned, right? Um, two, enable scalable investment into black owned media companies. Uh, three, equip, uh, black owned media companies with technology that not only uh, helps facilitate uh, growing their businesses today, but positioning them for the content experiences of the future. Um, and, you know, media companies and creators. Um, and then lastly, uh, we invest uh, via Group Black Ventures. And so investment means uh, capital, yes, but also uh, infrastructure and other things that we know are required to help grow the, 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 the brands that we work in our collective. Um, so we're excited about what we're doing. I, I, we've had a tremendous amount of support from the industry when we announced we had that $75 million announcement with Group M uh, and we just continue to push on. That's amazing. That's a staggering number. I'd never heard that 0.5% previous to BLM movement was, was invested in black media. That's, that's crazy. Wow, absolutely. Well, you, you definitely found a, a, a great space to fill. And I mean, are you, are you actively already um, uh, funding companies and moving these? Uh, I know it's, it's like a brand new thing, but are you already active in, in, your, uh, in your process? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like when we, when we, you know, we have some really awesome brands that uh, have really leaned in with us as partners. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and the amount of investment that we're driving is ramping very quickly, uh, which for me, it, it makes me, like when I wake up every single day, I feel good, right? Because we know that there's companies out there that are getting access to opportunities that they weren't getting access to before. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's, that's at the key, at the core of what we're here to do, right? Like we wanna make sure that a, two things, one, we want to make sure that the the our brand partners and agency partners are tapping into and yielding the power that the black owned black owned media companies provide, um, mm -hmm. delivering the, the 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 business outcomes that they're looking for, and you know on the other side it's uh, working with our the, the, our members and the collective and identifying opportunities for. Um, growth and scaling and, and driving more investment. Mm -hmm. So tell me a little bit about how the identification process happens. I mean, obviously this comes out in the news. I would imagine, you know, thousands of, of uh, you know, potential suitors 
roll in? How do you, how do you take that in and how do you decide uh, what money goes where? Yeah. So, you know, there's, there's, there's uh, four class, there's four different types of kind of statuses, kind of groups at group black. So um, there's, uh, there's members, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so there's the, the members are the companies like Essence and uh, Baller Alert, the Shade Room and, you know, Play Versus and, and, and Beautycon and Afro, all those Poller, right? These are companies that uh, we, we uh, both have all in the collective. Uh, we, drive, we work to facilitate um, investment into those properties, uh, media investment into those properties, but we also work strategically with uh, these various brands on growth strategies and, and custom programs and all these different things. So there's that plus acceleration that goes with that. Um, there's creators. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's th there's creators that uh, we, Black creators that we work with uh, and we facilitate opportunities between them and brands. There are our owned and operated brands as well. And then there's smaller publishers that could work with Group Black as well. Um, that are, you know, uh, that we more focus on driving media investment for. Gotcha. And how did, uh, how did the partnership with Group M come together? Yeah, you know, um, so one of the things I, I would have, I really commend uh, Group M, they, they, oh, they've always leaned in into this matter. They, they were one of the first to establish their 2% commitment fund, which, you know, that, the speed and, and, and intentionality at which they uh, formed that fund was was really great. Um, worked closely with Kirk McDonald, uh, CEO of North America, there and his team, which has been been really awesome. And you know we've we've been able to work with them and bring and and kind of help one educate their educate their clients on the different opportunities identify what they, but it goes both ways, right? Like identify what they, the types of things that uh, marketers are looking to see from the black owned media industry, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, it, it, it's, it's been a really great relationship, you know, working with some of their clients like Target, for example, which was an announcement partner in, in when, we, when, we, when we got things going. Um, it's been really good. That's awesome. Congrats. Um, so, uh, changing gears just a little bit, aside from your role as CEO of Group Black, you're also the CEO of Holler, uh, which is where I came to know you originally, uh, which is, you know, obviously, um, you know, it, it's, it's transformative in the communication space. Um, it's a conversational media company focused on the creation and delivery of content. Um, tell us about that company and about how brand marketers in the audience can use it for their own marketing efforts. Yeah. So... You know, why I love conversational media is because conversational media is the biggest media channel that people never heard of, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so um, you know, when I started Holler, it was really on this fact that, uh, you know, I was while well, everybody was focused on messaging, what I was mm -hmm. even more focused on was the rise of categorical messaging, which was a messaging permeating every aspect of our day. Mm -hmm. Everything from chat, social, dating, gaming, work, even places like payments, right? Where there appear to be a message is sent at scale. And so we're at the point where there's over 100 trillion messages sent across all of these environments wow. each year, right? Now, to put that into perspective, there's 2 trillion searches on Google, for example. <laughs> so wow. so, so it, 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 it's massive, right? And, you know, if you ask a person, did you send a message in the last 10 minutes? They likely would say, yes. Did you cons do a Google search? Maybe not, right? <laughs> and so, you know, for me, it was bizarre that we had not seen enough innovation in peer-to-peer -peer messaging since the first text message was, was sent in 1992, and we wanted to change that. Um, <laughs> and so we, found our, uh, we founded Holler with the core mission was three words, enrich conversations everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, because we believed that we could make online conversations better. And, you know, we started, you know, to get, you know, simply put, we power the content and the messages. So mm -hmm. stickers, gifts, you know, continuing to push the needle with what content means. And we mm -hmm. do so for over 70 million people every month um, mm -hmm. at Holler. And so, you know, what we've seen here is because we, we 
we powered the content, the media that lives in, inside of messages through these channels. And we built an AI that can understand the context of these messages and it, it, in real time and distribute that content in relevant conversations. We've seen some of the world's largest brands arranging everything from Molson Coors, L'Oreal, Starbucks, Dunkin', you know, Coca-Cola, every like we work with everything, everyone from uh, you know, ice cream to automobiles, right? Mm -hmm. um, who have found ways to make themselves relevant in the conversations that people are having daily. Like, so for example, you know, you go on uh, uh, you know, on Venmo and you're paying somebody and you're saying, you know groceries right or christmas list or whatever mm -hmm. that might be target target branded content right there mm -hmm. right so they it's it's really powerful um you know our our brands have seen tremendous growth uh, growth and um we've seen tremendous growth in our brands this has been our biggest mm -hmm. growth year ever um yeah. so you know it's been quite busy for me that's <laughs> um, awesome <laughs> Yeah, seriously. Um, so I came to know of, I mean, we've been friends for a long time and I knew what your company was, but I didn't know a practical application until Venmo uh, when I actually saw, and for those of you that don't know this in the audience, if you go on Venmo and you type in, you know, where you are going to pay somebody. And then like, for me, a lot of times that's fantasy football. I'll put like fantasy football and then like a little emoji will come up. That is you guys. What made you think, I mean, obviously when, when you got into this, um, there were already emojis existing on all of, you know, the iOS platform and um, like what made you think this could actually be a business outside of what they're doing? Yeah. So, you know, I remember when I call, to, looked at an emoji and I told someone that was content and they looked at me like I was crazy. <laughs> right. right? They, yeah. they, they, they're like, it's a smiley face. I don't understand what you're saying. Uh -huh. um, so, you know, it really is say for for. I knew, I knew there was an opportunity because as more of our conversations were moving online, mm -hmm. I knew that the need for visual communication tools, stickers, gifts, memes, even things like lenses and filters, all of these things that help us communicate and express ourselves and show personality in an ever more digital environment uh, where our, our ways of building relationships with each other, in, especially in the pandemic, uh, are here um, are going to be required, right? Yeah. And so, you know, what's insane is that there's over four trillion messages that are sent each year that contain emoji stickers and gifts, right? Wow. Um, there and you know the so it, it's used and that's only increasing by the way. Like mm -hmm. our conversations, our modes of communication are just becoming more visual. Mm -hmm. So you know what. For me, I was like, well, what, what we sh this is all content. And so mm -hmm. how do we make the content experience better? Like we just announced a partnership with NBC Universal, right? We're bringing content inside of conversational media connected to their programs for 2020 to 2022, right? Mm -hmm. We just, you know, Disney invested in Holler earlier this year. We took uh, a participation in the Disney Accelerator to e expand mm -hmm. the content experiences and messaging. Mm -hmm. So what you're seeing is, Big, big traditional media, uh, large IP holders taking a, a big kind of like betting on conversational media as the next place for uh, their IP and storytelling and opportunities. And you're seeing the same behavior from brands. It's mm -hmm. amazing. Congratulations on both the Disney and the NBC Uni. I was, I was actually going to be my very next question, but I'd like to understand how that, um, how that is, uh, you know, what's the application of that? Like when, when you have this deal with NBC Uni, is it like a peer-to-peer -peer chat app within your television or is it within their app? I just want to kind of get my head around that. Yeah, so, you know, Holler's integrated across chat, dating, payments, right? We're in over a billion messages a day, right? Wow. And so, you know, what, what we do, like, there's a lot of everything that happens in the real world, first of mm -hmm. all, makes itself way into the conversation. So every cultural mm -hmm. moment, holidays and stuff like that. So they people program mm -hmm. that. With NBC Universal, you know, now, like for example, say football, right? Mm -hmm. And the NFL. Yeah. And now bring uh, like, you know, typical situations. So 
uh, Sunday, like Sunday, like paying you for fo football related payment transactions, right? Okay. Instead of that just being generic kind of, you know, a football, now it's, it's NFL branded content, right? Mm -hmm. That is in that environment for which, you know, any of the NFL sponsors could then integrate into that moment. Mm -hmm. Right. So there's really interesting, powerful ways to um, to be able to uh, bring um, IP and content into conversations. And mm -hmm. by the way, stickers and gifts is, are, are just to start. One of mm -hmm. our, our, our R&D, the R&D that we've been doing has been to create, we're, we're in the process of creating new breakthrough ex content experiences that mm -hmm. people have never seen before. Right. Yeah. So mm -hmm. excited to be re releasing those in the coming uh, months. Very cool. Yeah, I would imagine with uh, all the craze about the metaverse right now, uh, there's probably ways that you guys are going to be getting in on that as well. Oh yeah, we. It's something. It's something that I. Web three is something I pay a lot of attention to. Very cool. So, what are the primary platforms uh, that people can access uh, Holler? Yeah. So you know we. Um, so we have our own uh, uh, apps that live inside of, uh, like you could download it there in, in iMessage and stuff, so you could use our content in those places and also share across any of the major apps. So we have our own and operated app. We're also integrated in Venmo, Meet Group, we, you know, other like large dating platforms as well, mm -hmm. uh, keyboards, companies that we partner with. So there's a plurality of ways that uh, people could um, access Holler. Very cool. Um, so as a leading black executive, can you tell us about how you started your career and some of the racial challenges that you've had to overcome uh, in business to get to where you are today? Yeah, 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 for sure. So, you know, one of the things um, as specifically as a, uh, a black tech entrepreneur, mm -hmm. right, you know, there, it, 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 it's a very limited, small space, community, right? Mm -hmm. Um, you know, the, the, when you look at the traditional path with respect to how entrepreneurs, especially in the tech industry are supposed to do it, you like call your friends and family, you know, mm -hmm. get a half a million dollars, <laughs> call up Peter Thiel, get him on your board. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, like that is like, it was like, oh yeah. Like, you know, I started a company, I called you like that just doesn't really happen, right? In, 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 mm -hmm. in the world of, of most kind of normal people, especially you know, where I came from, my background, right? You know, I grew up in Miami, um, you know, came from, a, you know, very, very humble, humble beginnings. And so, you know, the, uh, it, it, I think when you think about systemically how one is expected to succeed as a mm -hmm. entrepreneur, it's just, it's engineered to support people from certain backgrounds, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, it go, and then when you look at the issues around venture investment, right? We're still at the point where less, like, like less than 1% of venture dollars go to black entrepreneurs, right? Like we're, 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 we're talking, we're talking like, mm -hmm. you know, it's real, and this is kind of why from a group like ventures perspective, we're looking at these things as well, but mm -hmm. you know, the expectation, the, 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 the fact, the, the way it works, right? You have, mm -hmm. you know, angels, there's, you have angels who are from, are in certain crowds. You have VC that follow angels. You have those other VCs that follow those VCs and it, it keeps going on and on. Mm -hmm. And so it, the system is designed in its way to, facil to facilitate a specific, very specific path and so when we, under, when we say that there's lack of diversity, that's, it's, and it's, the problem is in the design. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for me, it, you know, I had to work exceptionally hard to um, break out and put myself into uh, the, the swim lanes that would have allowed me to get access to the resources, talent, mentorship, et cetera, that ultimately enabled me to grow. I have fantastic mm -hmm. mentors, advisors, partners, Etc. Um, and you know you need those things. You need mm -hmm. money too, right? Yeah. Like mm -hmm. you need all those things. And you know I think um, the amount of energy that I that I had to take that it, it, I had to exert to achieve those things mm -hmm. are certainly greater than pre probably people who the people who look different from me. Mm -hmm.
And I'd imagine that your goal with Group Black is to make it so that the next generation has it a lot easier than you. Exactly, right? Yeah. I mean, like, look, I, 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 part of my work at Group Black is me, you know, taking a look back at my experiences at Holler and, you know, layering that over the media challenge, right? And figuring out how to apply those learnings in a, at scale, right? Yeah. And so that's what we're doing. And, you know, we're really excited to, um, you know, we're, we're doing a tremendous amount of diversification. Um, mm -hmm. Our first year target uh, that we're striving to get hit is 500 million in our mm -hmm. first year. Uh, okay. And, you know, we're aggressively pushing against it. Nice. Uh, so for you, is like one of the best parts of this to actually get to interact with young entrepreneurs that you kind of see a bit of yourself in and to be able to help facilitate that growth? Yeah. So, you know, uh, like young entrepreneurs, uh, in voices, uh, internet voices, et cetera. Like it really, the, the, the amount of excitement, uh, that, um, folks have when they, when they, when we're there working with them, supporting them, it's fantastic. I remember when we uh, delivered our, our, I won't say which partner, but we, deli we delivered our first million dollar initiative to that partner, mm -hmm. right? The biggest deal that they've ever seen, right? Mm -hmm. And like, you know, for me, it just, the, the, the reaction, just me seeing the reaction um, makes me feel a little bit more sane and rewarded for actually running two companies um and so <laughs> it's it, it, it's those moments that make 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 me make me excited and mm -hmm. um make make a mix assures me that we're doing really good work mm -hmm. um so diversity equity inclusion and accessibility commonly known now as deia is the central focus of corporations uh do you feel like the blm movement and the senseless killings of george floyd um help bring greater awareness uh, to DEIA for all sorts of marginalized communities? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think what that, what with, with respect to George Floyd, so the, the that type of stuff was happening, right? Um, mm -hmm. It was just everybody saw it in a very, very like visual and graphic way, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, so going back to what I said earlier about our collective consciousness has been raised, right? Mm -hmm. I think that moment created an opportunity for we as a society to have a dialogue, mm -hmm. right? Um, yeah. And really examine with empathy, um, you know, the things that are, are, are happening, right? Mm -hmm. There's been probably the most amount of change in this, that in the period that in the period since then I've seen mm -hmm. um, in in different environments and so mm -hmm. when I think about the world I'm very hopeful right now like I, yeah. I feel like you know I before I was kind of like looking at it looking at what was happening on the outskirts with Group Black I'm working with a lot of people mm -hmm. and the level of I would say the level of commitment earnestness. Um, the intentionality around the work that we've been doing with people has been really great. And Group Black, you know, our approach is our approach has been very collaborative, right? Like we, um, we, you know, we we seek to help educate partners. We seek to help, um, you know, we're really partners, right? Mm -hmm. um, and you know, that's it's 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 been a really great model for this mm -hmm. in solving the problem. Yeah. So what are you doing specifically at uh, both Holler and Group Black uh, to promote diversity? Yeah. So one of the things about um, uh, so about let, let the topic of diver diversity in corporate culture, mm -hmm. one of the core things that I said has been broken in the way that a lot of companies uh, approach uh, adding diver like dr driving diversity in their culture is they treat it like a bolt-on, right? Yeah. And like, okay, you know, we got we have to add diversity now and they try to bolt it onto the side and it doesn't really change the organization. It's just kind of this thing that's not 
it, it's, it's kind of there, um, mm -hmm. but it's not really changing the 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 organization. What when we I think about diversity, inclusion, mm -hmm. belonging, it has to be a fundamental shift in the company's culture, mm -hmm. right? Or in other cases, if it's a culture build, then it has to be um, a, a a a intentional part of the, the how the company is designed right mm -hmm. and so we think about that like you know one of the things we're like you know we we're like you know we hope we hope that we don't need a diversity department at our mm -hmm. company right it just is mm -hmm. right yeah. and, it, and it feels natural and it feels it feels native mm -hmm. to you so I, I i think about uh things in that from from that lens mm -hmm. um and then, you know, more, it, more specifically, we think about, we, I mean, we think about everything from uh, the holidays that we celebrate, right? Mm -hmm. To, you know, we, at Holler, we launched a platform called DibSource, right? Which mm -hmm. it's a Holler project. And it's, uh, you know, the reason why we launched DibSource is, you know, we, we believe issues around diversity, inclusion, and belonging is a very complex problem. And, you know, like when we wanted to send the person to the moon, we, uh, you know, we as a society solved that problem in an open source fashion. Well, this is uh, this is a similarly complex problem. And the, you know, when I when I was looking for tips and things that businesses that were of the size of Holler at the time could do, you know, mm -hmm. like you know, companies that side don't have departments and things like that that <laughs> are, are, mm -hmm. are so specifically that. Yeah. So. You know, it, it was a platform that we built to share, and you could go check it out, dipsource, uh, holler.dipsource.com. But like, um, it, it, it was all the kind of tips and tricks and programs and things that mm -hmm. we've done, speaking series, all the things that we've done that we share in an open format, and we have partners that contribute to it about what mm -hmm. they're doing to drive diversity. Yeah, I can imagine too that like starting a brand new company like you just did with Group Black is a different process than, you know, you had Holler and you already had lots of employees and you, you have to, I mean, to, I'm sure from the top down, you, you uh, directed it in a way that it already had diversity baked into it. But I can imagine for a lot of larger companies now, uh, they, they're having to do uh, backpedaling and shifting and, and trying to integrate. Is there any uh, recommendations or advice that you would give to larger companies uh, that, that, you know, could in, incorporate diversity in a, a more authentic, less bolt-on sort of way? Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's an interesting question. It was funny, I was, uh, I was doing a talk um, the other day uh, and you know, somebody in the crowd asked the question, you know, whose job is it at the company to be responsible for diversity, right? Mm -hmm. Or who should be at the table for diversity? Um, mm -hmm. I literally said, everybody right <laughs> like, like building a diverse company is not one person's job right mm -hmm. um and building an inclusive com inclusive company a company that people feel like they belong is not one person's job mm -hmm. it's you know it, it it it's examining all of the cult like the cult the culture itself the leaders the people and ask asking the fundamental question especially from the leadership level are mm -hmm. we bought into this right Mm -hmm. like, do we embrace this, right? Do we hug these ideals, right? Are we mm -hmm. aligned? Mm -hmm. If we're aligned and everybody's bought in, then you will see, you will, and, and we align on what those behaviors are, mm -hmm. then you will see, and, 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 and I think tact, like specifically working on making sure that happens is like, well, yeah. but then you will see it influence the way uh, leaders manage teams and teams treat model leaders and you, you'll start to see those mm -hmm. behaviors um, proliferate. It's in the same mm -hmm. way when you see uh, certain organizations have bad behaviors, right? If, mm -hmm. you know, leadership is exemplifying bad behaviors, mm -hmm. the, the organ, uh, many people in the organization mimic mm -hmm. those behaviors and then that drives the culture. You could do that on the other way when it comes to diversity mm -hmm. and belonging. Yeah. Yeah, now I actually just read an article uh, that Activision is staging a walkout right now, and they're demanding, basically calling for the CEO's head. So that's, I think that's like the the far bad side example of, 
of what can happen if you don't, you know, take this on properly. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I, I was reading about you and I, I stumbled across this article last year. You wrote a great byline in campaign titled, there's no place in BLM for cancel culture. Tell us what this means and what message you are conveying to your readers. Yeah, so I actually, I think it was, there's, there was no place for cancel culture in the BLM movement, right? My bad, yep. Um, yeah, so one of the things um, during those times, I, I, you know, I, I, as, a, uh, as a Black executive, you know, I had a lot of people reach out mm -hmm. to me asking for advice, mm -hmm. right, on how, you know, there's a, in every organization, you know, there's, there's, you know, there was riots in the street and there's all these things and people were, the, the racial unrest was a, a real thing, right? Mm -hmm. Now, what, what we, what um, met most of those leaders who reached out to me were concerned about was making a mistake. Mm -hmm. Right, so it's like I really want to do yeah. something, but I'm almost a, a I'm almost afraid, like I'm like afraid to do something because I mm -hmm. don't want to be wrong, and I don't want like and like mm -hmm. you know what causes that fear, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like when we they, people are feared of getting canceled, right? Yeah, and so my point my point there was, um, you know, people like when when like for example when we when when I started to address issues in my company around racial unrest, what I stated was a set of beliefs. And I didn't, I stated that I don't have all the answers, but I'm going to tell you my process. Mm -hmm. Right. And I'm going to tell you that we're going to make mistakes, but I'm bringing you along for the ride and we're on this mm -hmm. journey together. Right. It's not a, it's not a, Ooh, ooh you made a mistake kind of thing. And I was like, no, we're mm -hmm. right. This is what we believe. And we're aligned on that. And we're on this, mm -hmm. this, this boat together. Right, and yep. we're all rowing on the, this thing, mm -hmm. and it, when people are rowing on the boat together, it it, it 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 when we when you know the boat tips over, everybody's working to flip it back over, right? Mm -hmm. So that's the the with the 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 unintended consequence that con mm -hmm. cancel culture could have to the BLM movement is that not it it actually causes people to not act and do things. Right, mm -hmm. because you know yeah. it's, safe, it's a safer um, mm -hmm. um, place to do things. So that was my that was my point. You know, other mm -hmm. people might have different viewpoints on that, but you know, my mm -hmm. given the conversations that I had and the things that I experienced, mm -hmm. I, I I do believe that it potentially has the it it has the ability to slow progress. Right, it mm -hmm. it, it it works at it at it's worked at as, uh, as a tool. In appropriately mm -hmm. in certain circumstances that were highly mm -hmm. effective for sure mm -hmm. but like as a standard course of business it's it it it, it could create mm -hmm. those other those other unintended uh, outcomes yeah no and i think i you know for for me personally just my own perspective on it um it feels so much better to know that there's an open dialogue going on and that you know a lot of black leaders a lot of diverse leaders would rather us all come to the table and try to talk through things than to, you know, keep it quiet and, and hope not to offend and, and that sort of thing. So I think that that's sort of one of the greatest takeaways from the, the openness of culture now is that we can have these sorts of conversations and everybody ends up being better for it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so a question for you, because um, we, we were mentioning uh, mentors earlier. Uh, do you have any mentors who are especially critical in shaping your role as a leader? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, I, um, I have, uh, you know, there's several people, but one, one of the people that I'll, I'll call out is um, uh, actually my co-founder co and chairman of Group Black, right? Uh, sure. His name is Richard Lou Dennis. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, Rich was, you know, while I was out there trying to grow um, my business at Holler, uh, Rich was one of my lar like largest earliest investors, right in Hollywood. Oh, cool! I didn't know that. Right? right, and so he backed me. He, you know, his fund um, co-led my Series A, and like it was, it was really awesome. And you know, he's been a avid supporter. You know, he watched him in his career. Uh, always look for 
kind of equitable practices. He, he put 80,000 women in school in Africa, like just, you know, really um, awesome guy. Uh, and he's now happened to be co-founder and chairman of Group Black, right? And, mm-hmm. and I think, you know, I, I, I watching him as an entrepreneur, um, you know, build uh, Sundial Brands is one of the largest uh, beauty brands and then, you know, go on and buy Essence and all these other things. It's really uh, been a, a a tremendous story, a, a tremendous kind of example for me to watch and it's been great. That's so awesome. Um, we're about to run out of time, but I wanted to pick one more question. I've got a couple here. Let me see which one would be the best to end on. Um, let's see. Well, this is a fun one, actually. I, I wanted to make sure not to miss this one because I wanted to do this one for you. This year alone, across your two companies, you've raised over $100 million in funding. Please let us know how this is possible and how you've managed to run two media juggernauts like this. Um. <laughs> A lot, a uh, little sleep, lots of coffee. Uh, <laughs> um, no, so you know, it's uh, it's what's really um, uh, interesting. It, it starts with people, right? So mm-hmm. I'm supported by a lot of really, really great executives across both companies. Um, mm-hmm. Like the, the executive teams come from you know everywhere, like from Cena and Viacom and. Disney and all these different places, um, top tier tech firms, like, so, you know, it, it, it allows me to, they give me the oxygen and room to focus on, you know, vision, strategy, shaping where we're going to go, thinking about our culture and our teams and our people, et cetera. Uh, and they execute and run the various businesses that they run. Um, so, you know, it, it's, it's really, it, it starts with that. Um, mm-hmm. I also have this, my direct support teams that help me too. And, um, you know, I think, I think it's great. I think, you know, I feel fortunate that, you know, we, we've been able to, uh, you know, uh, get the type of, uh, types of investments that we've been able to get, you know, we feel, mm-hmm. uh, that that means that we're doing things that are innovative, right. Mm-hmm. And we're, yeah. we're, we're challenging the status quo and we're, 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 we're telling our stories are resonating, right. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, for me, um, that it, it lies in that, right? If mm-hmm. you have, a, if you're solving a real problem, whether it's what we do uh, at Holler by making con- online conversations better, mm-hmm. right? Um, or what we're doing at Group Black, which is to dramatically transform the face of media investment and ownership, right? Those are the things that everybody at both companies are working really hard to do. Um, mm-hmm. And therefore, um, because those missions are salient, uh, we've been able to acquire the types of resources and people uh, that has enabled us to push on. I love it. Well, one last parting thought. You have the floor here to promote anything you want, uh, drive any messages home to this audience. Anything you'd like to, to add? Yeah. So, you know, look, I'm really, really uh, uh, excited, energized. So is uh, the collective of companies uh, at Group Black, ho- Hollers, a part of Group Black. Um, of the types of support and investment and care and creativity that we've seen, let's keep doing more, <laughs> right? And, and love it. that's kind of the message. Right on, my man. Well, thank you so much for being on. Uh, I will be down in Miami at Art Basel in a few weeks. Are you going to be there? Yes, I will. I'll see you there, my All friend. All right. We'll have to hang. All right. Thanks so much, Travis. Appreciate you Take coming care. on. Thanks, everybody.